Well, good morning, everybody. It's Jerry Hart here, and welcome to the October 2020 Practical Tax Update webinar. Um, yeah, first one, this is to do with <coughs> advisory fuel rates for company cars, where someone who has a company car and doesn't have private use fuel, the majority, uh, they fill up the tank and then claim reimbursement for business use mileage in their monthly expenses claim. And as we know, the revenue allow the employer, if they so wish, to use a non-statutory advisory fuel rate. Moving on to what's happened on penalties. Well, we knew there would be some pretty dramatic things happening on penalties, of course. In particular, the tax returns for the year to 5th of April 2011 that some of you are busy filling in now, if they're filed late, as we know, they'll create a penalty even if the correct amount of tax is paid on time. A change, but I don't think many of us were surprised really, perhaps arguably surprised it hadn't happened before. Because there's always been that on CT600's corporation tax returns, that if you file late, even if you pay the tax on time, there was always the penalty. Right, the next topic I want to look at is an update on this controversial topic of business records check. Let's go back to basics and then look at what's happened, what the changes. The introduction, if you remember, it was back in December last year that the Revenue announced a consultation on their planned program of checking business records within the SME sector. They attempted to justify the introduction of this program, not that they really had to, of course, by claiming that research by the OECD suggested to the Revenue that poor business record keeping is responsible for a loss of tax in up to 2 million SME cases annually. I want to move on to a topic which is the remittance basis with various issues and I'd like to thank a participant at a previous monthly tax webinar who pointed out that timing is everything when looking at whether or not the remittance basis should be claimed for an individual. The basic rule of course is that the remittance basis of tax applies to overseas income and overseas gains of an individual who is either not domiciled in the UK and or is not ordinarily resident in the UK. Now leaving aside the changes planned to arise from 6 of April next year, which we covered previously, the way the system works is that these individuals will not ordinarily benefit from the remittance basis if they've been UK resident for seven consecutive years. Let's move on and have a look at what the proposals anyway, but looking at the practical implications of this reduced rate of inheritance tax due to come in from 6th of April next year, where the charitable legacy is at least 10% of an estate. That proposal was touched on in an earlier monthly tax update webinar, and it reduces the rate of inheritance tax from 40% to 36%, but only in specific and very limited circumstances. Moving on to more day-to-day -day issues, on page 11, Close Investment Holding Companies, CIH, CIHC. The corporation tax small profits rate of 20%, as I'm sure you know, isn't available if the company is a close investment holding company, unless the investment is in land, estates or interest in land, provided they are let or intended to be let, other than to connected persons of the company or to certain individuals related to the connected persons. Leaving aside why property investment should be um, given preferential treatment, I don't understand why, uh, what is investment in property for this purpose is sometimes a matter of dispute, because obviously the client would rather pay corporation tax at 20% instead of at 26%, or it might be somewhere in the margin. 